Hello. So I did some quick maths. One plus one is two quick maths. Um, and we're going to do multicolored and then take another quick break. And then we'll do lands and artifacts in the same little window. Um, that way we're not, you know, doing 80 cards in one video uh, when we cut it up and put it on YouTube for later. So let's get into the multicolored cards. I'm out of all of my liquid beverages, so we're going to have to take a, an actual break after this one so I can refuel. Uh, but let's get into it. The first card we're looking at is Atraxa, one of the highlighted... Sorry, I had a weird little bubble in my chest. Um, Atraxa is a very popular and historical character in Phyrexian lore uh, in previous sets. Atraxa is back as the Grand Unifier. So Atraxa is three, a green, a white, a blue, and a black for a 7-7 Phyrexian Angel legendary creature with flying, vigilance, death touch, and lifelink. So it kind of takes one um, aspect from each of the colors. The only color that's not in Atraxa's color identity is red. Uh, when Atraxa Grand Unifier enters the battlefield, reveal the top 10 cards of your library. For each card type, you may put a card of that type from among them into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. This is pretty much a non-starter for limited and for um, constructed. This is almost exclusively a commander card, and it's kind of sad to see it um, because the tracks is really cool, but I understand that people are excited to play commander, and that's a very popular format, the most popular format, uh, in fact. So I don't blame them for designing an Atraxa card that is pretty much only viable in one format rather than all of the other formats. So... If you're into Commander, definitely check out Atraxa. Very cool uh, Commander card there. Next up, we've got Bladehold War Whip. Uh, again, we're pushing this um, Boros Equipment. I'm going to whisper it once more. Boros Equipment in Phyrexia All Will Be One is going to be spicy. If you like Boros, if you like Equipment, Spicy. Bladehold War Whip is one, a red and a white for an artifact equipment with four Mirrodin. Equipment abilities you activate of other equipment cost one less to activate. Equipped creature has double strike and its equip cost is three red and a white. So you get a one free equip when you play it because it has four Mirrodin and then it makes all of your other equipment activated abilities cost one less to activate. So this is a, a pretty much a must in equipment decks. It's going to be great. There's, we've seen three cards so far that make equipment costs cheaper. It's going to be big. I promise. Next up, we've got Cephalopod Sentry. A two white, a red, a blue for an X5 Phyrexian Squid with flying. Cephalopod Sentry's power is equal to the number of artifacts you control. So white, blue artifacts. Interesting. Next up, we've got Char Forger. Look at them just spitting out little goblins. One, a black and a red for a 2-3 Phyrexian Beast. When Char Forger enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one red Phyrexian Goblin creature token. Whenever another creature or artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put an oil counter on Char Forger. Remove three oil counters from Charge Forger, and you can exile the top card of your library, and you may play that card this turn. So this card does a bunch of little things that all make it equal a good card. Um, Char Forger is very interesting. If you play Black Red, uh, this is a very interesting card. Next up, we've got Cinder Slash Ravager. Four, a red and a green for a 5-5 five, five Phyrexian Warrior creature. This spell costs one less to cast for each permanent you control with an oil counter on it. So that's leaning more into the red side because there's lots of oil counter synergies in red. It has Vigilance. And then when Cinder Slash Ravager 
enters the battlefield, it, deal it deals one damage to each creature your opponent controls. So you can make it cheaper to cast, and then when you cast it, it deals one damage to all the creatures your opponents control. Pretty good, especially if your opponents have a bunch of little guys. Um, if they're in that Phyrexian Might kind of deck where there's a bunch of 1-1s, one this will kill all of them. Very powerful. Um, yeah, very cool. Next up, we've got Azuri. Azuri's back, and they have been Phyrexianized. Stalker of Spears. Two green blue for a 3-3 Phyrexian Elf Warrior Legendary Creature. When Azuri enters the battlefield, you may pay three if you do proliferate twice. And then the passive ability on it says, whenever you proliferate, draw a card. So this would be very cool. Um, you know, it might be worth splashing blue in my Ben the Fangbearer deck just to get stuff like Azuri on the battlefield and draw cards every time you proliferate. I think that's very neat. Um, yeah. Plus, if you pay the extra three when you when it enters the battlefield, you get p proliferate twice. Uh, so that's four plus three is seven. Seven mana total to proliferate twice and get card draw engine. That's pretty good. And then Glissa's back. Uh, one of my favorite zombies. Uh, sorry, one of my favorite elves. They're not always a zombie. Uh, this time, Glissa is the Sun Slayer. For one, a black and a green you get a 3-3 Phyrexian Zombie Elf with First Strike and Death Touch. Whenever Glissa deals combat damage to a player, you may choose one. Either you draw a card and lose a life, destroy target enchantment, or remove up to three counters from a target permanent. Pretty cool. Uh, next up, we have Jor Kadeen, First Gold Warden. Uh, it costs one Boros, so one red, one white. For a 2-2 human rebel legendary creature with trample, when Jor first gold warden attacks, it gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of equipped creatures you control. Then if Jor Cordine's Kadeen's power is four or greater, draw a card. So this is going to be one of those linchpins in your Boros equipment deck. I think that's very neat. Uh, next up, we've got one of my favorite planeswalkers ever, Kaito Dancing Shadow. I love Kaito. I love their story. I love their personality. I love their abilities. Uh, let's see if this one holds up to the previous version. Uh, Kaito Dancing Shadow is two, a black, and a blue for a three loyalty planeswalker. Uh, whenever one or more creatures you control deals combat damage to a player, you may return one of them to its owner's hand. If you do, you may activate loyalty abilities of Kaito twice this turn rather than only once. So that's very cool. You can bounce something of yours when it deals combat damage and you get to activate Kaito twice. Uh, their plus one ability is up to one target creature can't attack or block until your next turn. The zero ability is draw a card. The minus two is create a 2-2 two -two colorless drone artifact creature token with death touch and when this creature leaves the battlefield, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. So that's really cool because... If you're doing the Kaito thing twice, um, you can create a 2-2 colorless drone artifact um, early. Actually, no, because it'll have uh, summoning sickness. Never mind. Um, I was thinking you can create the drone, attack with it, and then bounce it using its passive ability to activate a second time, and that would drain I think this Kaito is really cool. I like the drain ability. I like card draw. Um, I want four Kaitos, please. Next up, we've got Kaya, Intangible Slayer. Three white, white, black, black. So seven mana total for a six loyalty Planeswalker. Kaya has Hexproof. And their plus two ability is each opponent loses three life. You gain three life. Uh, zero ability is draw two cards, then a each opponent may scry one. Minus three, exile target creature or enchantment. If it wasn't an aura, create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature with flying in addition to its other types. So you can exile your opponent's stuff and make copies of them. That's pretty cool. I really like that. 
Uh, is Kaya really expensive? Yes. Uh, do they have abilities you want to use in Constructed? Yes. Um, can you get to seven mana easily and cast Kaya in Constructed? No. I don't think Kaya is going to be a, a huge impact in Constructed. I do think that Kaya can be a game winner in Limited Play. I also think Kaya is a shoe in for Planeswalker decks in Commander. Um, I think being able to make carbon tokens that are copies of your opponent's stuff is really powerful, especially because you're exiling their version of it. So, um, you know, you kind of get to play your opponent's deck or all your opponent's decks if you're playing Commander. Next up, we've got Kethic Crucible Goliath for two, a black and a red. You get a 4-4 four, four Phyrexian Beast, legendary creature. At the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice another creature. If you do, reveal the cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-legendary creature card with lesser mana value than the one you sacrificed. Put it onto the battlefield, then put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Interesting. I don't know if I love that, but it's definitely interesting, especially if you have sacrifice outlets. Um, could be good. And then we've got Luca, Bound to Ruin. One of the, unfortunately, actually nobody cares about Luca, so never mind. Um, one of the Phyrexian, Phyrexianized Planeswalkers. Luca is two red, a Phyrexian um, red-green, gr a gruel, and one green. For a five loyalty completed planeswalker, plus one, you get to add green and red. Spend this mana only to cast creature spells or activate abilities of creatures. Minus one, create a 3-3 three, three green Phyrexian Beast creature token with toxic one. Or minus four, Luca deals X damage divided as you choose amongst any number of target creatures and or planeswalkers, where X is the greatest power amongst creatures you controlled as you activated this ability. So as we saw in the green set, uh, there's a lot of really powerful green creatures. There was one with eight power. So you could technically minus four deal eight power damage divided as you choose. Um, I think Luca's gonna be interesting. It's only, technically it's only you know, four, four mana if you want to pay the life, but it will enter as a three loyalty Planeswalker. If you do pay the five, you can minus four it right away, which I think is when it's going to be the most powerful. It's very interesting to see that all of the Planeswalkers that aren't completed are rares, and all of the Planeswalkers that are completed are mythics. Uh, they're a little bit more powerful. Next up, we've got Malkator Purity Overseer. So we saw Malkator be mentioned in a lot of the blue cards. Uh, one white and a blue for a 1-1 Phyrexian Elephant Wizard. When Malkator enters the battlefield, create a 3-3 colorless Phyrexian Golem Artifact Creature token. At the beginning of your end step, if three or more artifacts enter the battlefield under your control this turn, create another 3-3 three, three color, colorless Phyrexian Golem artifact creature token. So this guy makes artifact creatures. Pretty cool. Then we've got Malira, the Living Cure. Uh, this is a Selesnia legendary. For one green, one white, you get a 3-3 three, three human scout. If you would get one or more poison counters, instead you get one poison counter and you can't get additional poison counters this turn. And you can exile Malaria to choose another target creature or artifact. When it's put into a graveyard this turn, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. Exile Malaria the Living Cure. Choose another target creature or artifact. When it's put into a graveyard this turn, return that to the battlefield under its owner's control. So you can exile Malaria and save something of yours. Um, in response even because this is not a, a tap ability or a sorcery ability um, 
you can save something in response, which is really cool. I think if you're playing Selesnia or um, you're playing green aggro, you should probably splash white to play Malaria to protect, be able to protect and rebirth something that you care about. Next up, we've got Miglos, Maze Crusher. One red and a green for a 4-4 Phyrexian Beast legendary creature. Miglos enters the battlefield with five oil counters on it. You can pay one, remove an oil counter. It gains vigilance and menace till end of turn. You can pay two, remove two oil counters. It gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Or you could pay three, remove three oil counters, destroy target artifact or enchantment. And because this comes into the battlefield with five oil counters on it, you can do two of these right away. You probably don't want to um, give it Vigilance or Menace. Uh, you probably want to wait until the next turn, but you, know, you could technically do these right away. If you have Proliferate in your hand as well, you could uh, immediately play this, pay three, and destroy target artifact or enchantment, but... That's getting pretty pricey. Uh, next up, we have another lost planeswalker, Nahiri the Unforgiving. Uh, one red, a Phyrexian Boros, and a white for a five loyalty completed planeswalker. Uh, their plus one ability is until your next turn, up to one target creature attacks a player each combat if able. Plus, there's another plus one ability discard a card, then draw a card. Or its zero ability is exile, creature, or equipment card with mana value less than Nahiri's loyalty from your graveyard. Create a token that's a copy of it. That token gains haste. Exile it at the beginning of your next end step. So this is interesting. It's not a shoe in for the, those Boros equipment decks we were talking about. But it is only a four mana Planeswalker at full price. So that's pretty good. Uh, next up, we've got Necrogen Rot Priest. Two black and a green for a 1-5 Phyrexian Zombie Cleric with Toxic 2. Whenever a creature you control with Toxic deals combat damage to a player, that player gets an additional poison counter. And you can pay one black and a green. Target creature you control with Toxic gains death touch till end of turn. Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, next up, we've got Ovika Enigma Goliath. Five blue red for a 6-6 six, six Phyrexian Nightmare legendary creature with flying and ward three and pay three life. Okay. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create X-1-1 one, one red Phyrexian Goblin creature tokens where X is the mana value of that spell. They gain haste. So this is a spells matter aggro deck, um, but it is seven mana. So this is more... Again, more of a commander card than um, a constructed or limited format card. I think this is fun, but at that price, it's it's an, almost never going to make it into your constructed decks. It might be a game ender in limited, um, but I highly suggest you feel out how fast this format is before auto including a seven mana legendary. Next up, we've got Rhea Ivor, Bane of Bladehold. For two white and a black, you get a 3-4 Phyrexian Knight legendary creature with Battlecry. This is new. Uh, Battlecry says, whenever this creature attacks, each other attacking creature gets plus one, plus oh until end of turn. So this is a nice little attacking champion. At the beginning of combat on your turn, the next time target creature would deal combat damage to one or more players this combat, Prevent that damage. If damage is prevented this way, create that many 1-1 one, one colorless Phyrexian Might artifact creature tokens with Toxic 1, and this creature can't block. So, you choose to not deal damage from a certain creature, um, and instead you get to make a bunch of 1-1 one, one colorless mites with Toxic 1. So this is more of a play for your next turn attacker which i think is really cool plus you've got this cool looking knight on top of this phyrexianized horse it's all it's all really cool i like it then we've got serum core Chim chimera two a blue and a red for a two four phyrexian chimera with flying whenever you cast a non-creature spell put an oil counter on serum core chimera 
Remove three oil counters from it to draw a card. Then you may discard a non-land card. When you discard a card this way, Serum Core deals three damage to target creature or planeswalker. Activate only as a sorcery. Interesting. So it's a little pinger. Um, actually, three damage is a little bit more than just a ping. So I like it. It's pretty good. You have to discard a card that might be important, though. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. Uh, next up, we've got Slaughter Singer. Uh, one green, one white for a 2-2 two -two Phyrexian Cleric with Toxic 2. Whenever another creature you control with Toxic attacks, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. That's pretty cool. Nice little Toxic um, Anthem effect. I like that. And it's a 2-2 two, two for 2. That's pretty st standard. I like that. Next up, we've got Tainted Observer. Whatever the heck this is. I don't know. That's horrifying. Um, Tainted Observer is 1 green and a blue for a 2-3 Phyrexian bird. Oh, this is supposed to be in the air? This definitely looks like it's underwater. Right? Uh, for Tainted Observer has flying and toxic one. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay two. If you do proliferate, that's kind of a fun little passive effect. Uh, next up, we have Tyvar Jubilant, Jubilant Brawler. One of the uh, planeswalkers that survives the assault on new Phyrexia. Tyvar is one black and a green for a three loyalty planeswalker. You may activate abilities of creatures you control as though those creatures had haste. That's pretty good. Um, plus one, untap up to one target creature. Minus two, mill three cards, then return a creature card with mana value two or less from your graveyard directly to the battlefield. That's a pretty good planeswalker. Um, yeah. I think that's worth spl splashing black if you're in green. Uh, I would even suggest maybe splashing green if you're in black, although I feel like green had the better creature um, abilities, so we'll see. Next up, we have Venzer Corpse Puppet. These are my colors, baby. One blue, one black for a 1-3 Phyrexian Zombie Wizard with lifelink and toxic one. Whenever you proliferate, choose one. If you don't control a creature named the Hollow Sentinel, Create the Hollow Sentinel, a legendary 3-3 colorless Phyrexian Golem artifact creature token. Or you can choose target artifact creature you control gains flying and lifelink until end of turn. That's pretty good. Um, for those that haven't seen it, the uh, um, Hollow Sentinel token is basically a lifeless uh, Karn. So that's pretty sad. Just throwing that out there. I like Venzer. I think I'm going to include them uh, in my standard rotation. Definitely keeping an eye on this card to include uh, for that proliferate bonus. Next up, we've got Vivisection Evangelist. Three and a white and a black for a 4-4 Phyrexian Cleric with Vigilance and Corrupted. When Vivisection Evangelist enters the battlefield... If an opponent has three or more poison counters, destroy target creature or planeswalker an opponent controls. Damn. Five mana for a 4-4 four four with Vigilance that can kill something on ETB. That's pretty good. And the final... Oh, and we're saving the best for last, too. The final multicolored card in Phyrexia All Will Be One is Voidwing Hybrid. One blue, one black for a 2-1 Phyrexian Bat with Flying and Toxic 1. Uh, when you proliferate, return Voidwing Hybrid from your graveyard to your hand. So, Perpetual Voidwing Hybrid synergy, and I love it. Uh, I cannot wait to play this card. It is an uncommon, um, but this is my choice for rare uncommon. I love this card. This is my kind of card. I can't wait. Um, 
So that's it for all the multicolor stuff. We've seen a few really powerful cards that are kind of geared towards commander only. Um, we've got a very powerful Boros equipment leader. Uh, we've seen some playable Planeswalkers. This Kaito one is very playable in standard, as well as Nahiri, um, as well as Tyvar. Uh, we've got some fun, fun synergies with protection with Malira. Um, you know, Luca is very aggro friendly. Some some really cool cards in here. I think that um, the Magic Design team has done a really good job with this set so far. I'm very excited to see how it plays and feel what it's like to build these decks, both in limited formats and in constructed. 